Hi there and welcome to the review of the Lenovo IdeaPad 310. Um, yeah, I bought this for my wife actually, uh, since he, she got tired of her all-in-one computer from Samsung. So I had a look at it and thought why not just do a review on it. So first off, here we go. Um, looking at the design, it's similar to most laptops at first sight doesn't have any remarkable features at 37.9 centimeters by 26 points centimeters and a mere 2.29 centimeters thin and light almost 2.2 kilograms it's not bulky at all for 15 inch and uh, as you can see plastic design silver finish the construction doesn't provide much in terms of uh, perceived quality and also makes it not really apprehensive when you start using it because you're afraid of flex and such. Uh, as you can see on side, there you get your uh, legacy VGA port with RJ45 uh, LAN connector and HDMI 1.4 port uh, for output to a video uh, device monitor TV or even under monitor uh, the only USB 3 uh, port on this uh, laptop uh, a TRRS combined headset microphone port for headsets with uh, microphones um, so you might need an adapter if you have uh, separate headsets to your microphone uh, you will see a small microphone port just before you get the multi uh, multimedia card reader slot on the left hand side. Moving on to the right hand side, you will find two USB 2 ports um, and one DVD rewrite drive, uh, optical drive, with a Kensington slot uh, on the side. Uh, on the back, you will see nothing in terms of uh, I.O. or ports, and as you can see on the front, the front-facing speakers fire forward, and they are Dolby rated. When opening the laptop, you will see it flexes a bit, so because it's so thin, the LCD panel can flip open a full 180 degrees flat. If you really needed to, uh, yeah, my keyboard's just in the way, but you can see it will go totally flat if you need to, not really needed. But overall, you'll see a glossy screen, LED backlit display. Now, if you can look at it like that, uh, it's basically one of your normal LCD display where the black usually goes white when you turn it on so the backlight bleed is quite quite pronounced uh, as can be seen with most of the screens uh, the your default resolution is a 1366 by 768 HD resolution and this is powered by the integrated Intel HD graphics 520 chip with its own 2 gigabyte integrated video memory and also capable of running up to 1 gigahertz Coming back to the front phone speakers, um, these are Dolby rated, um, small, tiny, very tinny at the top end, um, lacks a lot of bass and low in detail, uh, adequate for short term use but I would recommend getting some good quality earphones if you want to really enjoy listening to music or games. As can be seen, the full keyboard that's available has a numeric keypad on the right and is not backlit at all. The keys feel responsive and have small travel distance. And as you can see at the top, media keys have replaced the F1 to 12 keys where these F function is available by pressing the function modifier down left. This is quite abnormal to normal uh, keyboards 
because this keyboard is mainly focused to guys who use the media functions rather than having the functionality of the keyboard for their productivity apps. I do not personally like this and would rather have left it as standard. And also the lack of a pause and scroll up function is quite weird. The key into key looks like an old like uh, angled into key from old uh, keyboards, but if you can look closely, it's like just a backslash key that's closely situated next to the enter on top of it. Uh, so doing fast typing, you might occasionally hit the backslash when pressing enter. So this is maybe not a great design decision. Moving on to the trackpad, this is a bone of contention with me. This trackpad is useless. Uh, it tracks good in terms of sliding the mouse around on the screen, but for taps, it's that doesn't even recognize it. It doesn't even pick up a single or a double tap. It needs to take precision. You need to really do it in a special way for it to pick it up. The buttons at the bottom also now. I wouldn't even bother with those, they feel weird, spongy, and they don't really register quite well. So I wouldn't even bother with this. I would just straight go for a, a mouse, and so you don't have to bother with this. Uh, yeah, here's a sample of just the how it sounds when you work with a trackpad. When looking at the bottom of the laptop, you see there's two access ports, one for the hard drive and one for memory, I think. So let's have a look at it and see what we can actually get access to. Now if I have a look at the port here for accessing the... Basically, I think this is RAM here, uh, if I could just open this up here. It's a quite tight fit, so be careful of not losing your screws. You will see underneath this is your Wi-Fi extension card for Bluetooth from Wi-Fi, your heat pipe for your CPU cooling solution, and one DIMM. Uh, this is DDR4. So if I take this out, you'll see. Let's see. See, there's four gigabytes of solid out memory on the motherboard and this is an 8 gigabyte memory module so this is 12 gigabytes in total so you have upgradability uh, above the stand 4 if you put in a ddr4 certain so i would say maximum 20 gigs would be possible with a 16 gig certain and then moving on to the hard drive case uh, i expect this only to be a normal standard two and a half inch drive so if I can get this open quite tight be careful of just not losing screws the hard drive comes in the bay, uh, tra tray you just lift it out and pull out like so with some digital one terabyte that's in there so easily swap this out for an SSD, maybe two to two, four terabytes. I don't know what's available, say, say that. So easily upgradable if you need faster uh, storage. So coming to system specs. What we have here is a 15.6 inch LCD backlit, 1366 by 768 HD monitor display um, with an Intel Skylake i5-6200U processor with an integrated Intel HD Graphics 520 and 2GB VRAM uh, on board. The RAM on the system is an integrated 4GB 2133MHz RAM with an additional 8GB 2400MHz SODIMM 
in effect giving you 12 gigabytes of RAM, although everything will be running at 2133 megahertz anyway, unfortunately for that. The hard drive is a Western Digital 1TB uh, Blue 5400 RPM SATA uh, 2.5 inch laptop drive. It's got built in AC Wi Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, and an HD Wink. So coming to benchmarks, um, this uh, CPZ CPU benchmark. If you have a look at it compared to my existing uh, Alienware 15 2015 model, the i5 on single thread doesn't do too badly uh, compared to the old i7 4720HQs. But again, on multi-threaded, it just loses out due to the fact that it's got half the threaded capabilities and uh, yeah that's about it moving along to pc mark uh, 8 on the home and work scores uh, the idea pad doesn't fall too far behind the alienware 15 inch so um, yeah strong performance but still slightly behind my daily driver Coming up to 3D Mark 11, the integrated graphics processing capabilities on score is better than the integrated graphics on my Alienware. If you could compare the HD graphics 4600 to the 5200, 52 or 520, uh, the 520 is definitely much better. Although the GTX 970 just blows them all out of the water. CPU performance is, well, for, for the physics score, so, so you can see the i7 does score better than the i5. 3D Mark Cloudgate. Again, the graphics score is better than the integrated graphics on my Alienware. And dedicated graphics uh, from 970M is just does much better. Coming to Skydiver, Skydiver performance again is stronger than the integrated graphics on the Alienware. You can definitely see the Skylake uh, generation uh, iGPUs are better than uh, Max or Haswell uh, 4600 and such uh, graphics processors. So I, I would say this is going to be the same issue for all tests going forward. Um, Looking at Firestrike, Firestrike shows the same, definitely better, slightly better performance. And yes, since this is a DX12 compatible iGPU, TimeSpy is a score. We do have a score for TimeSpy. My integrated graphics on the Alienware couldn't even couldn't get it working, so there's no score for the iGPU on the Alienware. Although you can see the 970M didn't do too badly, although it was a stuttering mess on the X12. Going back to Crystal Disk Mark, and this is for the hard drive performance. You can see the 5400 RPM Western Digital hard drive is performing quite poorly in terms of megabytes per second on both read and write compared to the 7200 RPM uh, HGST travel star in my Alienware, which is, is basically the storage drive, and the M2 SATA drive, which is an uh, Samsung PM851, where the read speeds are basically all over 500 megabits per second and the write speeds are over 100, almost 200 megabits per second. So overall, performance is not too bad for an entry-level performance uh, laptop. Now, heat and noise on this laptop is not bad. Overall, it never got hot on my lap. Not as hot as my Alienware 15 gets when it's in, on full, in full tilt. This is not bad at all. I can live with it. For long uses, it's quite good. And the loudest I've measured it on my cell phone was 62 decibels at max when it's fan span, uh, spun up for some 
calculations. The power adapter is a 40 watt brick, power brick, although it's one of those with the way the power brick is integrated into the plug, so it's a little bit of a problem when you have to use it for portability purposes. Uh, I would have loved the brick itself to be away from the plug and not on the plug so it doesn't have to sit on the wall uh, that heavy part so bad design in my books the battery is a two cell about five hour rated uh, lithium poly iron uh, polymer uh, battery although windows rates at about two and a half hours on balance mode when you take it off battery uh, off the power so I wouldn't expect to use it more than two hours on average. All in all, not a bad laptop. You do get what you pay for. It is cheap. It is, it's not going to be a power. It's not a gaming laptop. Forget about it. But it's a good workhorse. You can do a lot of work in terms of office productivity. My wife is going to use it for Adobe um, Illustrator and also effects. Uh, training, uh, training document, uh, training materials she's building. Like gaming, oh, even the integrated graphics is quite fast, faster than the integrated graphics on my anywhere. So, and it's even DX12 compatible, so you can do light gaming, definitely. But overall, this is a good laptop in terms of if you want something that you can just use for daily use, nothing major, nothing special, all good. But for anything beyond that, forget about it. It's worthless. Plastic is as good as it's going to be. It's got a one-year warranty. Don't expect it to live beyond that anyway. If you can upgrade it, it might last a bit longer, but I wouldn't expect this thing to be worth much in more than two years. Let alone one year. So there, yeah, that's my review of the Lenovo IdeaPad 31. Well, 3010. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, give me a like or a dislike, and give me some feedback on what you think of my full reviews for for laptop. This would this is my first, so I'm trying to use this as the rule ruler for most of my uh, following laptop reviews. And also. Um, Please subscribe. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe. More will come eventually. And yes, donations is, is uh, really appreciated. If you want to become a patron, by all means, I've got a patron page. There's a link you can click to become a patron to support us, get better, and get you some better content in the future. And yeah. Hope to see you soon. Enjoy. See you later. Get in there.